Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Builds and today we were dealing with the 2023 Kia EV6 GT Now this has 750 horsepower, 709 pounds feet of torque from its 77.4 kilowatt hour series of batteries and two electric motors The vehicle itself now weighs 3,795 pounds, has all wheel drive still but it now has off-road tyres and off-road suspension to go alongside with it and it can only not 16 2.49 seconds to 105.509 seconds and going to a top speed of 191 miles an hour so it's quicker in terms of acceleration and top speed than it was originally it weighs exactly a thousand pounds less than it did originally and obviously it has more in the way of power and torque it's got about well it's in excess of 150 horsepower um, 173 to be exact and yeah a good deal more in the way of torque as well so in terms of straight line speed it should be fine as you can see by the launch acceleration and the speed but and braking is fairly good but it still obviously is quite a heavy car so the handling is somewhat compromised because of that but the off-road capability is fairly solid as well to be honest so uh, yeah again despite the fact that you know this even though it's considered an SUV in some regards it's not a full blown one at the end of the day even with the off-road suspension so yeah could struggle in terms of off-road capability overall but I'm hoping it will be at least quick as far as EVs go. Uh, I imagine it's going to be alongside the likes of Volkswagen ID4 or the MG Cyberster. But yeah, regardless, it's going to be interesting to see what this can do for our first ever Kia EV. In fact, it's the only Kia on this game at the moment so far. So uh, yeah, see what they can do in comparison to Hyundai as well. We'll be taking the Ionic 5N on this course at some point as well. See how that can do in comparison to this. So yeah, despite its general size and weight, it's reasonably agile for now. Bump there, put us off a little bit for that checkpoint, but we eventually got it. Not the fastest EV in the world, um, generally, and in terms of top speed, but you know, the higher the top speed you give the, a vehicle like this, the, uh, usually the acceleration decreases as it typically takes a bit longer to get up and going. I've given it a bunch of the uh, aftermarket bodywork that you can put on this car just to uh, hopefully help the handling. It does have some weight, but for the most part, the bodywork does improve the handling. So it feels a lot more agile than the standard car does. Guess that's what losing a thousand pounds in weight does to you. So yeah, despite being quite a uh, decent sized vehicle, it's a lot more agile than it looks. Because it is an EV, it gets its power and torque virtually instantly, which always helps when getting out of slower corners. It's able to maintain its speed for the most part as well, even when it gets a bit rough. Getting up to the fastest of rates of speed, but we are seemingly quite consistent. Whether oh, that's going to turn into a fast time or not, we'll have to see. Yeah, this is really rather quite easy to drive, even in on a course like this. It does not have the most amount of power on uh, for a vehicle on this series, but this is the maximum you can give this car. And you can't swap in any more powerful batteries or motors, you can only upgrade what is there in standard form. 
And yeah, we're not as quick as the likes of the ID4 and the Cyberster, surprisingly, at 3 minutes 25.955 seconds, so we're more along the lines of the um, likes of a Hyundai Envision 74, but we are actually quicker than that vehicle. Um, we're ever so slightly behind an Aston Martin Valhalla concept car. Uh, but we are ahead of other vehicles like the Hennessy Velociraptor 6x6, the Ford F-150 Lightning Platinum, which is another EV, uh, as well as the... what other off-roaders have we had? Uh, the Land Rover Defender 110X, the Ford Bronco. Uh, ever so slightly behind the Ford Bronco Raptor, which just shows the difference between the standard Bronco and the Raptor in terms of what they are capable of. We are quicker than an Xpeng 7 though, another electric vehicle, as well as other EVs like the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, the Neo EP9, and that's about it I think in terms of off, uh, in terms of EVs, but still, overall a fairly solid time, just not a remarkable one. It's really rather consistent in terms of keeping up my rate, good rate of speed, no real issues in terms of driving it, it's just because it has only 750 horsepower it still weighs nearly 3,800 pounds. It's just not that quick, uh, quite frankly, in terms of gaining speed or, you know, except or in terms of having a high rate of speed. So, um, yeah, which is a bit of a shame because I do like the car a lot and it is a fairly easy car to drive, but not a quick one, unfortunately. But, yeah, nonetheless, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.